What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up? What's up? And LeVon Maynard. Welcome to the show. Yeah, another good show. We got LeVon back. Uh, definitely tune in to yesterday, where we talked about uh, some stuff that's going on with Apple and a replay attack. Um, then on Wednesday, we're going to have a discussion to do with ransomware and hospitals. And on Friday, uh, we will talk about everything else. Uh, also, please tune in to last week's uh, discussion, episode, I believe, 111, where we had Miss Aisha Hollins on as a, a guest uh, co-star or co-host, uh, where she uh, imparted her wisdom uh, in our discussion. So it was a pretty good uh, show. I, I definitely recommend you check it out. If you don't check out any of our other past episodes, like I said, that was 111. So we're like in the 117 range now. So we're, we're moving right ahead. Um Share us, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I always forget to say that. <laughs> Do all the above. Um, and then uh, obviously uh, continue to listen to us. But without further ado, I give you to LeVon. Right on. So like, looks like right now we have, a, uh, we have an article here from P- PCMag.com. Uh, this is an article from Michael uh, K- uh, Kan, or K-A-N. Um, and it's the FCC to create rules to stop SIM swapping attacks. Um, so this is basically, this article is discussing, um, uh, it's been a, 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 a kind of uh, a thing happening with mobile devices with SIM swapping, where basically uh, a hacker gets access to um, your mobile uh, account through like a, uh, a you know, a, a mobile provider like T-Mobile uh, through, uh, uh, through Verizon. Uh, through at t and they're able to get into your account and basically uh, do a sw- SIM swap. So they're basically swapping your SIM or basically taking control of your phone um, and, you know, basically transferring it over to a device that they, that's in their possession. And at that, at that point, your phone is no longer active or no longer able to receive calls or receive text messages. And by using this method that, you know, basically hackers are able to, to get access to the phone as well as um, potentially if you have an account that's using like two-factor authentication is using that that um, using that mobile uh, text message to receive your second factor authentication, um, they can actually use that to gain access to your accounts. So, you know, this is uh, something that you know obviously can affect a lot of us. And it seems like uh, I was looking in this article, and it, it appears that you know they make reference to the fact that a lot of um, information has been exposed through like data breaches. So for example, um, you know, your birth date, your residential address, or worst case, maybe your social security number has been, you know, has been uh, uh, made public uh, through some data breach, whether it's like, uh, what's the one that happened, the uh, credit provider, other, like a couple of years back, but- um, Equifax, wasn't it? Equi- yeah, it was Equifax, yeah. So who knows like who has access to your, to your, your social security number and they just go ahead and give a call to Verizon and say, Hey, I'm, I'm such and such. I'm, I'm Shannon times. And uh, I need to go ahead and switch my, uh, you know, switch my phone over to this new device. I just had some issues and they're like, okay, Oh, can you verify your social security number? Like, Oh yeah, I got that right here. And, you know, they give that, and, you know, they ask for your residential address or your birth date, all this like simple information that's readily available, you know, not readily available, but if they happen to have access to that information, uh, they can, they can use that to kind of verify and be, you know, say that they are you. Um, so using that information, they, they swap the phones over and now they have uh, your device basically, and they can, they can uh, pretty much do whatever they want at that point, as far as, you know, using it as an authentication piece. Um, so, I mean, obviously this, this, it, it, would take some some effort. I mean, I think those kind of attacks may be a little bit more um, targeted. So if like somebody has like your password, they happen to have your password, or they know who you are. Like I think they reference an article as well. I think back uh, there's a Twitter. The Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey was attacked back in tw- uh, 2019, and they used a SIM swapping attack to be able to you know get access to his his phone and w- was able to authenticate to I guess his Twitter account or whatever, and and uh, you know get access to some some of his other like accounts. Um, so it does happen, but I, I do feel like it's a little bit more targeted. I mean, it's somebody would have to have your, your password already for that account that they want to get access to. And then they have to like, uh, um, you know, um, go through the process of calling the, the mobile uh, provider 
and, su and swap the SIM, and then you know enter the password and wait for the, the, the authentication piece to come through to the phone. But I think one good way to kind of counteract this is to use instead of using your phone, they've already talked discussed. I mean, this has already been a big thing as far as the SIM is not a really secure and reliable way to to um, method to be uh, to be used as a, a second factor. Um, they they recommend using like the authenticate authenticator apps. Like they have the um, the Microsoft Authenticator, that the Google Authenticator. Um, I'm sure there's a couple other ones, um, but just use those because those are more um, those are tied to your account. You can actually, you know, they're not so much tied to a mobile device. Um, it's much harder for people. People have to actually break into that account first to be able to like get access to that to that um, Authenticator app. And uh, I know they have their own, you know, uh, security pieces in, in place to kind of prevent that as well. But um, these are kind of like, you know, these are something that we have to be in, uh, aware of. I mean, we, uh, many of us probably have our information out there, which is not even aware of it, that's in the, and on the dark web. And um, they may try to use this as a method to try to get access to our accounts and, um, you know, try to get, get more, uh, you know, whatever method they want to use to, to get access to our, to our information. So um, I guess with that said, do you guys have some thoughts on it? Yeah, uh, definitely. So I, I think this really highlights the insider threat aspect. Of, uh, of, of this issue uh, in SIM swapping. Like if your carrier uh, employees can't be trusted um, to either either transfer it correctly. So it, it may not, it may be um, uh, ignorance when they do the transfer, they may just be giving it to the wrong person uh, or they, you know what I mean? They may be subject to a, um, uh, a phishing a a attack or uh, just social networking. Like somebody just talks well enough on the phone to let you believe that they are someone else. And then you do the you do the swap, uh, but then it's also the nefarious side of it, right? Like they're saying that people are being bribed to uh, to do it in targeted attacks. Like you're like you said, I think you said Jack Dorsey um, in that case. Like that was insider. Uh, someone someone was paid off to to make it happen. Uh, but regardless, um, it's kind like in in that aspect of it. If it's coming from the carrier not doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, nefarious or ignorant. Um, Either way, it's out of the customer's hands. Like it's nothing you can do about it. You don't even know what happened to you. Uh, yeah. You won't. You won't know unless um, your account get hacked, gets hacked, or something like that. Um, uh, it, it negates that two-factor authentication that Levon loves. Right? Multi-factor goes out the window. Mm -hmm. If someone is sharing text messages with you, they, they're also getting the uh, authentication text as well with the eighteen characters um, when you when you swap accounts or when you when you change your password. So. A lot yeah. of it is out of the customer's hands. So I, I like how the FCC is actually reaching in. I, I get a lot of people don't like government overreach. I, I get it. Uh, but in this case, th that uh, loophole needs to be tightened. So I'm, I'm all for it um, just to protect the customer, right? To make sure that the, the carriers are doing what they're supposed to be doing uh, mm -hmm. in all aspects. And if they're not, then, you know, they get the business, the fines and things of that nature will, will uh, come down the pipe. So. Uh, I, I think this is con consumer uh, friendly. I, like I, I have no qualms with them uh, uh, making carriers be held uh, accountable uh, to their 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 customers' security. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to steal everything. I, I give it to Shannon. So, so you actually you actually did hit on something I was going to address. Is that this must oh, have, this must have hurt Levon's heart when he saw that this could affect your multi factor, right? Because like that's how he always verified. No, no, no. Your phone. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> like, probably no, went on his no, knees no. and wept you know it was like <laughs> dove, dove came out from somewhere no but, uh, but no but <laughs> no because 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 here's the thing and i i, I joke but multi-factor is one of the secure ways we go about doing things right like it's another way it, it, hence the multi in it right it's not just one way of verifying who you are you go about doing this another way um and they even mentioned in the article about some ways that they can go about combating this but like some of the stuff they mentioned i don't know if it would actually help because it, it so if you have if you have the 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 carrier um ask even more in-depth questions right is that really going to help you if they get hacked again right like if all that information gets put out there again okay now they know your mother's maiden name your sister's middle name you know all these more intricate things they would have asked you to try to make sure to try to do a better job of of, of verifying who you are right. um, you know what i'm saying so like well that doesn't that doesn't matter to me that you're going to ask me more in-depth questions if you're still going to get hacked anyway right but like you were saying ryan like give them the business when that does happen right like go ahead and start throwing, you know, $50 million fines their way and see what they do. Be like, oh, wait a right. minute. 
You know what I mean? So like make it hurt for him a little bit. Um, another thing they mentioned was uh, doing a wait time on it, like send an email or maybe wait 24 possibly 48 hours until you actually implement this or until you respond and say, cause you know, if you get those emails that say um, there was a change, like if you ever change your password, right? There was a change made to your account from this device. If this was you, you do not need to worry, but if it wasn't, please contact us, like stuff like that. You know what I mean? But um, I, I'm, <laughs> so as I've said numerous times before, I'm the Patriot Act guy, right? So I have no problem with the FCC trying to step in here and, and, and do something different to make this safer. Um, but I just don't, I don't know where the happy, I don't, I don't, I don't know where, I don't want to say the correct, but I don't know what a good way forward is. You know what I'm saying? Um, other than you showing up in person with, with the ID, you know what I mean? With like three forms of ID to say, this is who I am. That's the only way I can think about doing it, but that may not always be feasible either. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you would go about doing this, but I'm glad it's something that they're thinking about and looking into. Right. And that's one thing I, I, I completely forgot to even mention. Uh, I didn't really get into the whole FCC portion of it. But as you were describing, I mean, the obviously FCC is like looking into uh, imposing some you know, requirements for these uh, mobile, mobile companies to, you know, with the verification process, like you said, a 24 hour thing and, uh, um, you know, kind of verifying through the text. But it's kind of like, uh, you know, as you described, it's like, it, you know, hopefully these things are work well enough that can actually prevent this from happening. And um, you know, because, uh, you know, I kind of wonder sometimes if, if, you know, even waiting the 24 hours, if, if, if the person doesn't know, like, they're still going to, you know, they, if they don't get notified, they don't get, you know, some sort of notification on their phone or gets, uh, get some sort of communication that, that their phone is about to get swapped over, uh, they just go 24 hours and all of a sudden, oh, my phone's not working. But same time, I mean, at least they're trying to do something, trying to put some sort of, uh, you know, structured system in place that will actually prevent these uh, SIM swapping attacks from happening. And, you know, of course, this thing is kind of like still in work in progress. So it's like they, I guess they're going to, um, uh, let's see, the, the rulemaking process will take some time. It requires first asking the public comment before the FCC can finalize proposed regulation and proceed with a vote. Um, in the meantime, consumers can check out the FTC or FBI for tips on how to prevent sin swapping. So no exact timeline, but it looks like this, you know, kind of work in progress. Hopefully something comes up soon. I mean, and along with this too, this kind of made me remi- reminded me of. Uh, I know they have something in place that they're trying to deal with the uh, um, telemarketers and like the the spam calls that a lot of people are getting. They're trying to make some sort of like authentication uh, system where people can't call you randomly uh, without being like a authenticated number or some sort of. Uh, I, I don't even know how the process works, but uh, I'm looking forward to that because I've been getting so many uh, hits on uh, extending my car warranty that uh, uh, I don't even have a car anymore. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> But you joke, but I don't. I don't have a car, and I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with, yeah, with so. that, with that, I believe I believe it when I see it, right? Like I've been yeah. on the do not, I've been on the do not call list, I, so like I right. verified this, right? Because I was like, I know I've done this before, but I was like, well, maybe it expires, and you can right. actually go and check the status of when you got on the do not call list. And mm. It's been over over two years. My number yeah. has been registered on that list, and they still calling me about my warranty. I'm like, look. Like even yeah. even when I bought my car brand new, I was getting calls about it. I was like, <laughs> right. "Come on now, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, like what the hell? You ain't gonna sit here and tell me I need a new warranty when I just drove it off the lot." When your friends plug their phone into the uh, rental car, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, That's all now you're on a list somewhere. <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, that's good though. It's like, hopefully, you know, hopefully something comes of this. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know how quick they're going to put this in place, but it's, uh, you know, uh, um, I, I, I'd much rather not even have my, my information out there in the web on my social security number and residential address and all that kind of stuff. But I guess we can't do anything about that now that, uh, if if things been hacked, hacked to death. Yeah. So we can just do what we can. Yeah, definitely. But, um, I don't know. Like I, I, I can see regulation helping, uh, but like you guys said, you have to protect your, your own information as well. Uh, and the carriers just need to do a better job in general when it comes to information aware or what is it? Uh, cyber awareness training as well as uh, insider threat and all that good stuff. Um, you can also stop doing surveys on social media where you give out all your information. Like, <laughs> what's the last? What is it like? Where, what what street did you grow up as a child? That'll be your. Uh, your 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 uh, 
film name or whatever like just these surveys are pulling the data out from you as well and you just sitting there doing them um stop doing that right uh, <laughs> but uh i think this i think this will go a long way i think this is something that does need to be addressed and we will keep posted right because we've talked about sim swap uh earlier uh in the podcast uh way back when january february time frame when this was a, a an ongoing issue and now we see the fcc is kicked in so perhaps by next fall we'll see uh what progress has been made or who's been fined um because we we all have the same carrier who keeps having breaches perhaps they need some uh incentive to stop being breached mm -hmm. um but definitely like share subscribe definitely continue to tune in throughout the week tomorrow we'll be talking about ransomware um uh case in our discussion which uh may be may be attributed to the first death due to ransomware um I'm, I'm sure the, the first recorded one, I'm sure other ones have, have happened um, in, the, in, in the past. Um, but and then on Friday, we will uh, discuss everything else. So we'll talk about uh, Venom 2. We'll talk about uh, video games, like 12 minutes. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about some other stuff um, that like 80s movies and uh, video game generations. So a lot of nostalgia on that podcast. So definitely tune in. Hopefully I got a voice for it because my voice is starting to fail already. But um, hit up the website, www.theothersideofthefirewall.com, where you get to all our social medias. Uh, you can hit us up personally. I am at RyRy Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy. I am on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and TikTok. And you, LeVon? You hit me up on the Twitters and LeVon Main. There it is. Stay safe, stay secure. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.